everyone! Welcome to part two of me talking about my bilateral salpingectomy procedure that I had two weeks ago at 23 years old. Now in the last part of this video, I talked about why I decided to get sterilized, why I had it done so young, how I found a doctor, and why I did the bilateral salpingectomy and procedure. And this video is going to be talking about what the procedure was actually like. So this was my first big surgery, and it was 10 times easier than getting my wisdom teeth extracted. I was given instructions for what to do before the surgery at my pre-op visit, which was a week beforehand. They told me no eating eight hours before surgery, no drinking water two hours before arrival, and I was told to arrive two hours before surgery, so no drinking water for four hours before the procedure. I know it's a little confusing, but if you have this done, they'll explain everything to you. I was also told to stop taking supplements a week before surgery because some of them can thin the blood, and I was told not to shave before the procedure. Unfortunately, I forgot this. I wanted to have a beach body, so I shaved a few days beforehand and then freaked out thinking they'd cancel the procedure, but they didn't. They said it was okay, but you do want to avoid shaving. So my mom drove me to the hospital. We arrived there together, and she sat with me. And we had to talk about mortality together since this was my first big surgery and I was really nervous. I actually kind of felt like I was going to die. So I was really grateful to have her there to hold my hand. I also had a really fun little picture book I brought with me called The Meaning of Life that I was reading in the hospital bed. Um, I'll link that book in the description. So while my mom and I were sitting in the waiting room, um, there was a hospital bed. I had to change into a gown. I was given no slip socks. and. Um, I was greeted by a parade of nurses and doctors. I got to meet the an anesthesiologist and everyone explained what was going to happen to me so I could feel safe. They stuck an IV needle in my arm, which was really tiny. It hurt less than a blood draw. It really wasn't that bad. It was probably the most pain that I felt during that procedure. <laughs> and I was wheeled to the operating room and before I knew it, I was asleep. I woke up in the recovery room feeling sort of high and I had three band-aids on my belly and I had these sort of granny panties that the nurse I woke up to called party pants. The nurse introduced himself. He said it was his third time introducing himself, but I couldn't remember anything. I thought it was the first time. So the nurse handed me a liquid to drink. It was probably some kind of kid's pain medication, but um, a couple of doses since I'm an adult. I had told them I had trouble swallowing pills, so they arranged for me to have a liquid medicine. That was really nice of them. I drank the purple concoction thankfully and was wheeled back to the original room. I could feel a dull ache in my belly. And that ache sort of shocked me because I was in a hospital with an aching nether region, a tiny pool of blood and no baby here. No baby. If I were going through so much pain, why wouldn't I get a baby out of it? And I, I just started to mourn for the child that I was never going to hold in my arms for the first time and I was never going to breastfeed and whose tiny little hands I was never going to hold. I had begun to take the baby decision for granted and I was never gonna have that choice again. And my eyes welled up with tears as I mourned the loss of that possibility. I don't think this mourning process is a sign that I did anything wrong. I think it's a natural process. In fact, I think it's a sign that I'm doing things right because it means that I'm being really honest with myself. I had even done a lot of spiritual work prior to finalizing this decision. Um, I went on a trip where I asked what was the right thing for me to do because I had consciously decided that I didn't want kids, but I worried that maybe subconsciously some part of me did want them and these two parts of me might be fighting each other. And what I discovered is that the being is all one being. There's not a separate person living inside your head trying to scream out for help. It's all you and you know yourself and you can trust yourself. I can trust myself. And what I found was the reason that I was questioning this at all is because I didn't love myself enough. I didn't trust in myself. I knew the decision, I had made the decision, and I needed to trust in that. Because Mother Nature or God or whatever it is, she will always love you, no matter what you do. And in the same way, because we're all a part of God or nature or whatever you believe in, we're all capable of loving ourselves no matter what happens even if you make the wrong choice. I knew that I could always find love 
whether or not I had children, I would have love to give and I would find people to share it with. I thought of all the good things I would be doing in the world as a result of not being a mom. With the IUD out of my body, I felt at ease. I felt at peace in my mind and body. I felt as though a weight had been lifted from me. I even felt like my belly and uterus region was less painful than before the surgery. I was finally free. I am free. I was discharged from the hospital that same day once I could walk and drink and pee. Um, but the first time I got up to go to the bathroom, I felt horrible. The world spun. Gravity assaulted me. My guts were on the verge of being spilled up through my mouth. But once I learned how to get up slowly, it was a lot easier to walk. My mom drove me home and helped take care of me. Because I was instructed not to lift anything heavy for a few weeks, it was really hard to do basic things around the house. Just lifting a plate or vacuuming my floor became a challenge. So I'm really glad I wasn't alone in this. At home, I was instructed to take a stool softener and pain medications. The pain pills they gave me were huge. And I can't swallow pills to begin with, even little ones, but I didn't protest because I didn't know if I had a choice. That first night, I cut one of the pills in half and dissolved it in a glass of orange juice and drank that. But the next morning when I woke up, I didn't need any pain pills. In fact, I was barely in any pain at all, to my surprise. It, it was even less painful than getting my IUD inserted. Just a week later, it was easy to forget that I'd had surgery. Actually, the worst thing to hurt was my nose and throat, which were sore from having a breathing tube in them during the surgery. And that lasted for a few days, but that was the worst thing to hurt. And I was warned about this, so the sore throat didn't come as a surprise. My scars are healing beautifully and my doctor did a great job on them. I think my belly button's looking even better than it did before the surgery. Can't stop poking at my belly button, it's so crusty. Look at that. <laughs> and I'm really excited to have these new cute little scars on my belly that show everyone, hey, I made this really cool decision for myself and I'm proud of it. I still have to be careful not to lift anything too heavy for six weeks after surgery, and I can't do other things like submerge in water or go get a massage until I'm given clearance by my doctor. Which kind of sucks because I love massages and I'm watching all my friends go swimming in the river because it's summer, but it's a really worthwhile trade-off. It's sort of surreal to think about how my belly was cut into and I have no recollection of it happening and no memory of the pain. I still can't believe I had surgery. It really happened. Bodies are an amazing thing. You know, I didn't even think I'm the sort to have surgeries because I have so much anxiety and I just avoid things like that. But I did it. And it was a lot easier than I thought. And even if you have anxiety, you can do it too. You're amazing and powerful. We all are. Also, practicing mindfulness the day before the surgery helped so much with my anxiety. I know you hear this all the time, but really just spend the whole day just noticing things around you, focusing on what you can see and hear and taste and touch. I promise you it will help you so much to stay calm when you're in that waiting room. So it's amazing that I'll never have to think about birth control again. I really made the right choice for me. And you know, I would do it again. I thought about it deeply, took control of my life, and acted out of self-love. If you take the steps and move with the right intentions, you really can't go wrong. Thank you so much to all the doctors and nurses who made this happen. Thank you to the health insurance that made it possible. Thank you to the earth for loving me even through my confusion. And thank you, listeners, for allowing me to be 100% candid with you because I never want to be anything but honest. And lastly, thank you to me for loving myself, always.